Hey, it's Dave, and this is my Intet the Dreamer Commander deck. Uh, I started out, this is, Intet was my first EDH deck ever. Uh, I'm sorry, my first Commander deck ever. And basically I picked it because... I really like his ability, and I really like getting free stuff. So the deck started out as uh, just a gigantic number of giant spells, like eight casting cost spells, that I really just wanted to play for free. And that was really what it was. I didn't have any kind of real strategy to it. Uh, it has morphed since then and has gotten a little bit better. Uh, so there's the commander. Uh, from the beginning, I was a big proponent of being a true Highlander. Uh, I don't, I don't think that the way to go forward is just take a bunch of basic lands and throw them in a deck. So uh, I tried really hard with Intet to make it true Highlander. So you'll see one island, one forest, one mountain, and that's it. Uh, it means that you have to make some questionable calls in the mana base as time goes on. Uh, which you'll see, but I really think that that's part of the fun. I mean, you you want to be able to play these old cards that nobody has ever seen before. So, okay, I cheated a little bit. There's a snow-covered island and a snow-covered forest. Uh, one Scars land. Uh, I really like the new Scars uh, dual lands. Unfortunately, I only get access to one for this deck. I have the, the the set of pain lands for the colors, Carpalusen Forest, and Sheep on Reef, and Yavamai Coast. And I have some of the uh, the better than basic mountain legendary lands from Kamokawa Block. This is uh, Shinka the Bloodsoak Keep, Okina Temple to the Godfathers, Grandfathers, Oboro Palace in the Clouds. And uh, next is the Ravnica Dual Lands. Here's the Steam Vents and a Breeding Pool. And a Stomping Ground. Uh, I like the Cycling Lands, the, the not the Odyssey ones. Odyssey ones? Urza Saga ones? That were cost you two generic mana, just the colored ones like Tranquil Ticket, Forgotten Cave. And then the Vivid Lands. Great, uh, cheap way to make sure you're getting all your colors. Uh, Vivid Crag, Vivid Creek, Vivid Grove, Polaria West uh, can help you find the specialty lands that you have, Halimar Depths, just to kind of set yourself up for the next couple turns, Cephalid Coliseum gives you some card drawing, uh, the Ravnica uh, Karoos, Bounce Lands, are great ways to fix your colors. Is it Boilerworks? Simic Growth Chamber, or what I'm using. There's... What is the name of that card? What is the name of that card? It goes with the burn, the two burn spell, gain a life. Anyways, there's an awesome Future Sight land. Mossfire Valley, old filter land, uh, new filter lands, uh, flooded grove and firelit thicket, storage land just to kind of give me some fallback for giant X spells later in the game, fungal reaches, Keldon Megalis. I don't ever really end up being hellbent very often, but again, it's just a way uh, to get red mana and not feel like I'm cheating the Highlander system. Forbidden Orchard gives you any color mana. So does Tendo Ice Bridge, one time. And Academy Ruins then to 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 recurse your artifacts. And Mirin the Morning Well. I really am a big fan of Mirin in terms of doing just anything. I mean, you can either, even if you're not stealing creatures, sacrificing your own guys for their effects, putting them in the graveyard, and gaining life is is really a good thing. You, I obviously don't want to do it, but if you need it, you, it's there. Evolving Wilds to fetch basic lands. 
And now we get into some of the additional mana producers. Uh, Rights of Flourishing kind of made it in here just as a way to keep playing lands and drawing cards. It's a nice uh, political card, you know, let everybody uh, get to draw extra cards, play extra lands. Dark Steel Inglet as a mana producer. Is it Signet? And Simic Signet. Now where this deck has gone away from being about eight casting cost sorceries, it has gone towards being a survival of the fittest deck. Uh, there's just so many creatures with comes into play abilities in these colors that it that playing survival and being able to tutor up whatever you want is just really really important, I think. Um, you run into so many unexpected game states in Commander that that you just never in a hundred cards you're never going to have the guy that you absolutely need. So uh, I'm running Survival and Fauna Shaman uh, to to that end. And here are the creatures that I like to tutor for: Moldrifter to draw your cards. Squee is just a way to abuse um, Survival of the Fittest, obviously. Caldera Hellion to wipe out giant hordes of, of squirrel tokens or spirit tokens or whatever is being generated. Tornado Elemental to handle giant hordes of dragons or angels. Uh, it actually sees, I actually tutor for this a lot just because it kills commanders very well. Draining Well just to be a counterspell. Man of War. Uh, sometimes all you need is just to bounce something back and give yourself a, a moment of respite. Viridian Zealot. Eat artifacts and enchantments. Mystic Snake, just as in the Counterspell. Gilded Drake is a great commander card because, unlike Sword of Temptation, which you'll see here shortly, if you if you you make this change permanently, you get their guy. They get Gilded Drake. If Gilded Drake dies, they don't get to, they don't get their guy back. So I really like Gilded Drake. Um, Brutalizer Exarch is a newer addition. I haven't yet really seen gotten to see how he plays out. I played him in sealed of all places and thought to myself, this guy is really great. Getting to search for a specific creature card is is pretty strong. And plus, it handles problem things like. Um, Pernicious Deed or Disc or things like that. Duplicant, sometimes the best thing you can do with a problem is just eat it. Stomp Howler to handle artifacts and enchantments. Sword of Temptation, because sometimes what you really want to do is crack someone in the face with their own general. Um, then there are other creatures in the deck. Birds of Paradise, obviously not a great survival target, but helps with the mana colors. Um, Wart the Raid Mother is really just humorous more than useful, uh, but getting to and getting to entwine or conspire um, things like survival or uh, tooth and nail or um, wheel of fortune is is pretty entertaining. Um, Crows and Tusker just helps get you the land colors that you need. Uh, to fairy. Uh, just a way to kind of give you an element of control, uh, turn off people's uh, activities during your own turn, your turns. Uh, Genesis again, another creature that works really well with survival. Um, getting him in your graveyard means that you have an additional resource that you can play from. Eternal Witness gets back whatever you have already used, and Sphinx of Draw Isle is just another big um, flying guy that. Uh, you can't target. So is Simic Skyswaller. I I prefer him just because he has trample and actually tangles with the bigger dragons. Bogard and Hellkite to do last points of damage or just be a big flyer. Uh, this deck also has what's a, I guess referred to as a combo kill. Um, you may have seen Splinter Twin and Deceiver X Arc and Standard now. This is the original version, Kiki Jiki and uh, Pestermite. Uh, the deck also has Tooth and Nail, so if you get yourself into a trouble spot, uh, you can Tooth and Nail for both of them and pick up the win, or 
Uh, you can also just if you're doing something casual, you can get uh, the other creatures that are in the deck. Defense of the Heart, another way to tutor creatures. Uh, now on to the bulk of the of the legitimate spells. Wild Ricochet is just a great card in multiplayer commander. Getting to double copy and then redirect both of those copies of a spell makes for all sorts of great shenanigans. Swerve, another way to kind of give, give you some control about what's going on. Void Slime handles just about anything that could possibly give you trouble. Uh, deed activations, counter spells, counters activated abilities. It's great. Uh, sometimes I don't like what I've drawn in my hand, so I run a lot of Wheel of Fortune effects. Uh, I run Wheel, I run Balance of Power, which uh, is five mana but can draw you, you know, a lot of cards. Uh, Wheel of Fate, and Winds of Change. Factor Fiction is there to draw cards. Uh, Brainstorm, Mind Spring, Prophetic Bolt is a holdover from playing against Xur way too often. Uh, getting to do four damage to something and getting to impulse for four cards is pretty good. Five mana is kind of a lot, but I really like the card. Uh, there's Ponder to help you draw some cards. Tidings, draw cards, and there's Grace. Sensei's Divining Top. Um, no EDH deck should ever be without Sensei's Divining Top or Soul Ring, but this one doesn't have Soul Ring, and so I just say no EDH deck should ever be without Sensei's Divining Top. 4C to draw some cards. Harmonize. Brain Geyser. The, what, I have, what I like about long-running EDH games, Commander games, is that you have a chance to cast Genesis Wave for a lot of mana at some point in time. Uh, I really like Genesis Wave, I think it's a lot of fun, and you just never know what you're going to get. Time Stop is a theme in all of my EDH decks, I really like Time Stop. Praetor's Council, um, one of the big gigantic spell holdovers from uh, from Intet, I want to be able to cast, I do want to be able to use his ability and cast gigantic spells at, at times, and so I really like Praetor's Council for that. Chandra Nalar, just a measure of board control, a little bit of creature removal, and her 10 damage ability goes off a lot more than you would expect in Commander. Evacuation, another big... Uh, quote-unquote mass removal spell for intent. Regrowth just to get back whatever I've used. Commandeer to take control of other players' spells. Engineered explosives just for mass removal. Crystal shard for some bounce, mainly commander bounce. And that's it. Thanks for watching CMDR decks. Please subscribe and favorite.